How's it going guys? My name is Dom and today I want to talk about classes in JavaScript. So basically for those of you who haven't ever used classes before, um, a class is used to create one or more objects. So you can think of an object as being a creation from a class definition. So these classes aren't actually used directly by your program logic but they're used to create objects. Now these objects are the ones that are actually used by your program to achieve different things. So with that being said, you can define two main areas with a class definition. You can define what an object will have. So this is called an instance property and also what they do. This is called an instance method. So. With instance properties, um, taking into basically example of a human being, a human might have a name, an age and a height. So an instance property describes the current state of that object, what they have. It's basically just data about that property, sorry, that object. So these instance properties are unique to every object which is created from that class definition. So we now have the instance methods. This is what they do. So an instance method um, for a human being might be to talk, to run, and to jump. So this refers to what they actually do, what actions, um, and their behavior. So typically, an instance method will use the instance properties to achieve their result. So have those two main areas right there. So let's now create a class in JavaScript. So down here, uh, we can create a class definition by using the class keyword. Let's type out class like that, followed by the name of your class. Let's create a class for a rectangle. Let's type out rectangle right there. Now typically by convention, you want to use a capital letter at the beginning of your class name. So it's going to be rectangle with a capital R, just like that. Followed by um, two curly braces. So now inside here, this is your class definition. So every class also has what's called a constructor. Now the constructor is basically just a method which is ran only once during the life of the objects. So this constructor is ran once and it's ran when the object is being created. So let's define this constructor by typing a constructor like that, followed by two parentheses and your normal curly braces. So the constructor is used to set up your object. Okay. So this behaves like a normal method or normal function which means if I type out console.log inside here and then just say um, the rectangle is being created. Okay, so now this method constructor is ran when the object is being created. So we have a class. Let's now create an object from that class. So down here, let's create a new variable and we'll call this one something like my rectangle number one, which is then equal to a new object based off this class. Let's type out new. That's the um, that's the new keyword, and then say rectangle just like that, and then two parentheses to actually call that constructor method. So if I was to hover over this, we see we get constructor just like that. So this will call the constructor method. So now, if I was to save this HTML file and then refresh the web browser, in the console window, we get the rectangle is being created. If I was to um, make two of these rectangles, so my rectangle number two down here, save this and refresh the browser one more time, we get two messages of creation. Okay, so that is how the constructor method actually works. Okay, 
the constructor is used to actually, obviously, as I said, used to set up the actual object. So, back to these instance properties, what you um, might commonly see is the instance properties being defined inside the constructor. So, we have a rectangle. Now, a rectangle might have a width, a height, and also a color. So, let's define these three instance properties within the constructor. So, below here, let's define an instance property. We can do this by typing out this dot and then the actual property name, for example, width is equal to and then the value. Let's just say it'll be 5 for now. And we can do the same thing for um, the other two properties. We'll say this and then dot height equal to, let's just say something like um, 3. And the color, let's make this a blue rectangle. So, the, this keyword right there, that is a keyword which refers to the current object. So, when I say this, I'm talking about the object which is being created by that class. Okay? So, we now have our three instance properties defined inside the constructor. So now, if I was to uh, save this and refresh the browser, then in the console, if I just refer to the my rectangle object or the um, variable here, okay, and press enter, we can see we get three properties, those color, height, and width, which describe the current rectangle. Okay, so these properties are unique to this rectangle instance. All right. So, in most cases though, you actually define um, instance properties when you construct the object, but these are typically user defined. So usually, you would type in my rectangle and then say something like three and then five, and also maybe the color. So we'll say blue like that. Okay, pop this out, blue. So. You want to make this 3, 5 and blue actually turn out to be the instance properties for this created object. Okay, This allows you to make custom rectangles with whatever values that you actually pass in. So to achieve this result, you actually want to make the constructor function accept parameters or arguments. So let's type out an underscore here and then say um, uh, height. Actually, let's start with width. So we'll say width and then height and then color. So these are now three parameters which are passed in through the constructor function and then these will be assigned to the instance properties of this particular rectangle object. So let's swap out this width with these actual um, variables right here. So, now, we're assigning the width of this rectangle to be width, height, and color, and so on. Okay? Let's just make this a 5 and a 3. So now, running this line of code right here creates a rectangle with a, um, with a width of 5, a height of 3, and a color of blue. So, these are all passed in and inserted right there. So now, if I was to save this one and refresh the browser, we get the same result. Let's just um, log out the actual rectangle object. We get this rectangle with the five, height of three, and a color of blue. So, with this scenario, we can actually create two objects here, two rectangles once again. But for the second time, let's give different um, data. Let's say 10, 5, and then red. So now using this class definition, we're defining the structure of this rectangle but giving it custom values based on the individual needs of this, I guess, current state in the program. So if I was to save this and refresh the browser, this time, if I type out rectangle number one, we get width five, three in blue. Number two, 
we get 10, 5 and red. So we can see how the instance properties are unique to the actual object being created. We have two squares here with different instance properties for their data. So that is the actual instance properties and the constructor function. Okay. Now, for the instance methods, we can define these under the constructor. So, to work out, I believe, the area of a rectangle, you multiply the width and the height. So, we can actually create a method which will give us the area of this rectangle or the rectangle being created. So, let's define a new instance method. We can do this by typing out the name of the method. Let's say get area. So, get area right there, that is the name of our instance method, followed by the two parentheses right there and then um, the brackets. So, inside here, let's actually just return the width and the height of this rectangle. So, let's say return return this dot width multiplied by this dot height. Okay, so now we should get different um, return values from this method based on the um, the rectangle being used. So, for example, down here, let's say console.log and then let's say um, rectangle one dot get area. Okay, so using dot get area, this will call the instance method. So, for this rectangle right here, we should get 5 times 3. For the second one, rectangle number 2, get area, will give us 10 times 5. Let's save this and refresh the browser. We get 15 and 50. Okay, so you can see how these methods are defined in the actual class definition and they're generic um, to the actual class and then they're using the instance properties that are defined by the constructor to give you different results based on the object being used. Okay. Now, one more example of the actual uh, method. Let's make a method that will actually print out a description of the actual um, object. Let's say print description. Okay. Inside here, let's just say console.log and then just say something like um, uh, I am a rectangle um, of and then let's put the um, the width and height so we'll say this dot width and then um, this dot height then we'll say and I am and then the and then the actual color so this dot color so now by calling this print description method on um, a rectangle we get I am a rectangle of width times height and I am then the color so now down here let's call the print description method on the my rectangle number two okay dot print description if I was to save and refresh this one we get the expected result Rectangle of 10 times 5 and I am red. Okay. So, just to recap, we have a class, which is a definition, um, basically a structure of the eventual object being created. We have an instance property, which refers to data that is relevant to each individual object being created. And we also have an instance method, which uses the instance properties to achieve an action or some sort of result um, based on once again each individual object being created from that class. All right, and that is the basics of classes in JavaScript. Thank you for watching and I'll see you later.